Welcome to another video from the DJPodcast.com. In this video, we're going to be looking at the included mappings for the Native Instruments Control X1 and sample decks inside of Tractor Pro 2. If you weren't aware, there's actually a built-in MIDI mapping for the Control X1 and the sample decks. You don't have to go and remap all the different controls just to get it working with the controller. It's one of the advantages of using a MIDI controller that's built to work, especially with Tractor Pro 2. So if you didn't have it configured already, let's go into the preferences and make sure that we've got our X1 set to control the sample decks. I'm going to go into our preferences and you want to make sure that you're on the Tractor Control X1 tab. You can see here that I have the option of what mappings I want to use for my two X1s. If you're using just one X1, then that's perfectly fine. You can do the same thing. You'll just have slightly different options here. You can see that I have C and D SMP set to my second X1. Now, you want to make sure that you have one of your controllers set to that. And if you don't see any changes in what the mappings do, you can always hit restore and resolve all of those problems by simply setting it back to the default mapping. Now, that will remove any custom mappings you have, so please be aware of how that works. Also, when you do restore a default mapping, you may need to switch which particular deck is set to one or two. And you can simply do that by swapping the sides. So really that's all the setup that we have to do. Native Instruments has taken care of the rest of the process. So we'll close out our preferences. And now we are here inside of Tractor Pro 2. We've got a couple samples loaded up into our sample decks and we're going to look at how the controller works. So you have to remember that the Control X1 is split down the middle for two decks. So we've got a line down the middle here, and this side, the left, is going to be used for deck C, and the right is going to be used for deck D. Let's talk about some of the controls going from the top to the bottom. Here you have what would be your effects control knobs. Well, now they are going to be your filters. So whether you want to do a high pass or low pass filter on your different samples, you can now do those with these knobs. Obviously in the center you're not going to be doing any sort of filtering, but if you go to the left, as you can see, it's a low pass and to the right is a high pass. And of course that works for all of the particular sample slots. You go one, two, three, and four. Now if you have been using the filter in Tractor, you know that you need to turn on the filter before it actually works. That's what these effects button controls are. So if you click these on, your filters will be on. And obviously if you click them off, your filters will turn off. We also have the browse load rotary encoder. This is going to be for your volume. And we'll talk about that a little later. You also have the loop rotary encoder. This will actually change the size of the loop. Now you have your transport controls here. These would usually be for what you're going to do things like queuing and playing your track. Well, now we have a couple different functions for each particular button. The main one is that the button on the left is going to be your play button. The button on the right is going to be your retrigger button. So let's take a look at how this works. Press this button on the left here. It starts playing our sample, right? Simple as that. Well, what if we want to restart that sample? Well, we can hit this button at any time, and that will restart our sample. Now, these buttons also have secondary functions depending on what you're choosing. And to activate those, you can always hit the shift button and then the button that you want to control. So let's say we want to stop the sample. You just simply hold shift, press the button, for the sample slot that is currently playing. Okay, so let's talk about the select feature. Select is used for both the loop size and volume, and this will come in handy when you're trying to manipulate the controls of the different sample slots. To do that, you want to hold down the shift button, and then you want to select the particular sample slots that you want to control. So in this case, we'll just do one and three. You can see now that these buttons are highlighted 
and this indicates that you have selected them and you're going to be able to control them. Now when we go to use our volume knob, you'll see that it's affecting both sample slot 1 and 3. Also, when we use our loop size, it will affect those particular sample slots that we've selected. The shift button does more than just that though. It will also stop and clear your particular sample. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say that we have this one going right here. It's a simple little bass line, right? We want to stop that track. Well, all we have to do is hold shift, press the button, and that will stop it. Now, once this sample is actually stopped, we can remove it from the sample deck as well. All we have to do is hold shift again and press the button for a second time, and that will remove the sample from the slot and clear it up so that we can use it later. There's one other thing that we can do with the shift button that's pretty cool. You'll notice that with all of the samples that we're using, they always start at the very beginning. And obviously this is to keep everything in time and quantized when you're mixing between samples and track decks. Well, if you want to change that for whatever reason, you can use the shift button and the loop size rotary encoder. So with a particular sample that is stopped, we are going to hold the shift button, then we're going to move our loop size rotary encoder, and you can see that we are moving within the particular sample. The playhead is about a quarter of the way through the house one loop that we've got set up. Now when we press play, it's going to start at that particular point in the sample. That's a basic overview of the sample deck mapping for the Native Instruments Control X1 and Tractor Pro 2. This mapping will really allow you to explore the different ways that you can use the sample decks alongside tracks within your mix. For more news, reviews, and how-tos, please visit thedjpodcast.com. Thanks for watching.